Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up HDRI map lighting in Blender 3. Okay, let's go ahead and open up Blender. So I'm using Blender 3, the latest version. If you haven't installed this software, I'll put a link in the YouTube description showing you how to install it. So we can go ahead and click on general and as default, we've got a light source, a cube and a camera. If we press F12, we can see the render and here's our cube and our camera is looking at the cube and our light source is over the way over here somewhere. So you can see it's darker here and lighter on these sides here. I'm going to go ahead and you don't need to do this, but I'm just going to turn on screencast key so you can see my key presses down here. I'm going to click on the light source and delete it and click on the cube and delete that. And then I'm going to middle mouse click and I want to rotate around so the X and Y is like this, the red and the green line. I'm going to press Shift and A and add in a UV sphere. So here's our UV sphere. Let's press S to scale and scale it up a little bit. And then we're going to go to the, uh, let's just right click on it and shade it smooth. Shade it smooth. And then let's go to our modifier, add modifier. Let's add a subdivision surface and set that to two in the view and the render. So we've got a nice round sphere. Let's click on that sphere, go to the material, and we will go to our viewport here, viewport shading. And as default, if we were to click on this drop down and click here, you can see these HDRI maps that are built directly into Blender. And you can use these to just play around with the lighting to see how your object looks. But as, at the moment, we're just gonna leave it on its default setting. We'll click on the object, go to the material, click new material, and then we want to add some metallic. So we're going to set the metallic all the way up. Now you can see like the lighting taking effect. And let's set down the roughness, let's bring down the roughness to something like this. So we can just about see the HDRI map. And we've got this shiny object, right? So when we go ahead and um, if we were to add a light source, if we press F12, we can just see this like gray circle. We've got no real lighting in here. This lighting that we're using is temporary lighting just to experiment with. So what we want to do is set our X and Y position like this, and then we can press Control Shift and zero, and that moves our camera to that point. And then we can go to the camera settings here, click on the camera, and we'll set the, uh, let's see, let's set the Y to zero here on the location. And let's, um, let's just move the camera back a little bit. And then the X rotation is fine. The Y rotation here will set that to zero. So we're looking at it pretty bang on center, but just a little bit above, right? If we were to middle mass click down, you can see the camera is pointing at an angle. Let's press zero, go back into the render view, and let's press Shift and S to save this work. And let's just call it uh, HDRI lighting. And we'll save this. So let's, push, let's call it zero one and save it. So to add HDRI lighting, let's minimize this and open up the web browser. And we'll open up this folder and we will create a little folder in here. You've seen, you've probably seen me do this plenty of times before to create HDRI lighting, but I thought I'd make a separate tutorial just on this specific subject. So that if someone wants to know how to do it, you can just go to this tutorial and watch that. So we're gonna type in HDRI Haven and the website's been renamed to Polyhaven, but I always type in HDRI Haven. We'll click Polyhaven. Let's click here. Let's make a little um, let's make a little notepad file here. Notepad file. Let's just call it notes. And any of the HDRI maps I download, I will put into the YouTube uh, description. So we'll click HDRI here, and you can see the different maps in here. So we've got like indoors, outdoors, sky, studio, lighting, like nature, urban, all these different options, right? So you can click sunset, and you'll see like sunsets. Uh, all these different options for different lighting environments that can affect your scene. So I'm going to middle mouse click on this one, middle mouse click. We're going to scroll down. We could pick maybe four or five of these different ones. Let's pick uh, something like nature. And then let's try out uh, this one here. And then let's go to nighttime. Where's nighttime? Uh, let's just minimize this. And we'll look for... Uh, Outdoor Sky Studio, We're looking for nights down here, and we will middle mouse click this one. I always like to use this one here. And let's just pick one more, so we'll have four of them. Let's do clear, maybe. So look at clear. Let's take this one. So we've got four maps here. 
I'm going to put links to all of these same maps, but I would suggest you download other maps and experiment with them um, just so that you can have a bit of fun, right? And see what the other maps look like. Let's click on the first one. Make sure it's set to 4K and HDR here and click download and then do the same with the next one. Download, download and download as well. So we've got four of them. Let's go to this folder and drag them into here. Drag them all into here. We can close this, close down the folder, and then we can go ahead and apply this HDR map. So let's go back to Blender. I'm loading the long, wrong version. Let's go to this one, and let's go to Shadings, and let's go to our World Settings. And in here, we've got um, the background, the default background, and the world output. Now, if we go to our render view and zoom out a little bit, let's press zero, in fact, so we can see what the camera sees. And you can change the strength here, right? change the strength for the background color you can change its background color I'm gonna leave it as default one here I'm gonna press shift and a and add in a mix shader mix shader so you press let's do that a bit slower shift and a shift and a and then go to shader and add a mix shader and drag it in here and then press shift and a again and we will in fact take this background and drag it in fact we can just leave it here leave it here as default and what we might do is change its color to black let's just change it to black or quite a dark gray very very dark gray we'll press shift and a texture and environmental texture then we'll press shift and a and we want uh we want uh let's see we want vector mapping right so shift and a vector mapping is here and then we want shift and a and we want to do a uh, texture coordinates and then finally shift and a and import and we want a light path here so take the generated connect it to the vector here take this vector connect it to this vector take the color connect it to here and then take the is camera ray in fact we won't do that yet let's click open and let's go to hdr map and we'll click one of these and click open so now you can see the HDR map, all right? Um, let's click on the sphere. We can rotate around it, and you can see the the HDR map in the background, and it's affecting the the sphere here because this the sphere itself is metallic, right? We put a metallic um, effect on the sphere, uh, which is why you can see it's reflecting all of that. Um, you can go back to the object settings in here, and you could change the roughness. Of this sphere so you can make it fully metallic and now you can actually see uh, the HDR map reflected inside of this this sphere or you can increase the roughness just to blur it out a little bit but it still have the effect of the the lighting in there right I prefer to do it this way it just looks a bit better rather than seeing like all the hills and stuff in the background and you could reduce the metallic as well a little bit just to like fade it out and experiment with the settings right you can even add a um, a bump map to this if you wanted to you can press shift a uh, we could add a bump map so let's see texture let's see uh, in fact we'll add a, a noise texture and then a let's see vector bump and you can connect that to the normal here you can connect the factor to the height here and then let's see now we can kind of add a bump map to the to the object itself we can reduce its strength or increase it you can change the detail you can make it quite rough like this and now you can see the effect that it's having and you can go back up to your roughness and reduce that and you won't see so much of the reflection because it's got roughness to the edges so you won't see it like a clear clear reflection um, of the surface right so I need you to go and experiment with those those settings uh, metallic we'll set that all the way up and you can play around with the roughness here like this maybe we'll bring down the the uh, the um, scale here to something like this right so with shiny object and has a little bump map applied to it let's go back to our world settings and inside the world settings we have um, the camera ray so what we can do is connect this over to the factor and that will just basically hide the HDR map in the background. Now we've just got the object rendered with a black background. And we can change the background color 
uh, in fact what we need to do if we want to change the background color we need to uh, press shift and a and insert a uh, shader background here and connect it to the bottom here now we can manipulate the background color so we can change it to blue any sort of color we want we can decrease the the, uh, the color here we can remove its strength so it would just be black so you can go and experiment with the background here um, accordingly right so i'm going to set it to black so i just want it to be black um, now you can really place any object in your scene and as long as it's got some sort of you know material that can reflect light then you're going to see that effect applied so if we were to go to the map and select a different one you'll see the lighting will change right the light has changed now it's got the, like the blue sky um, we can go to the Shanghai one click that and we'll see the lighting from that particular object we can go over to here and add a bloom and then we can apply a bloom effect you can get some nice sort of effects inside of your scene so you can apply this to text objects as well so as an example um, if we just grab this object let's go to our in fact we'll go to solid view for the moment we can click this object and let's just um, let's just drag it out the, the scene for the moment press shift and a and let's just go to text and we want to rotate this text so it's completely in the wrong direction that's probably me setting up the camera wrong anyway so let's go ahead and um, let's just rotate this text so we're going to rotate it on the z axis i believe z rotation uh, we want to rotate around this way so let's set it to minus 90 and then let's rotate it on the let's see where's our camera gone the camera is here so let's undo that and then we want to rotate on the x-axis let's set it up to 90 let's press 0 uh, 0 so we can see the camera view now we can see the text standing uh, but it doesn't look that great does it so let's go to our text object let's um, go to font let's increase its size and let's just type in um, we can click on the text go to its edit its settings and type in uh, HDRI I'm just going to type in HDRI and then press the tab key to come out of the edit settings or yeah, the edit mode into back into object mode and we can increase this a little bit let's um, set the center position here and the top let's set it to center here as well and we'll click the blue arrow and just drag it above the floor where the floor would be let's press zero again in fact let's middle mouse click or rotate around and we want to go to our geometry let's extrude this object not need to extrude it that much and let's just set the bevel to like 0.2 something like this should be pretty good and uh, let's just uh, grab our camera and I want to move it up a little bit so location on the Y uh, sorry location on the Z let's move it up slightly and I want to move it forward so let's bring it forward and let's bring it down I just want to get closer to this text here just move the camera a bit closer or you can make the text a bit bigger either way around we'll click on the text and in theory we should just be able to go to our material let's go to our render view so we can see the text in here and we should uh, let's just click on the drop down we should be able to just apply that other material to it so the original material that was on this this uh, sphere we've applied it to the text now so now you can see the HDR lighting effect directly on the text itself the text object like this uh, we could click the plus sign to create a new material for it Let's go back to shading let's go back to object let's press zero and zoom in a little bit let's click this so we've copied the material let's get rid of the um in fact let's just disconnect the hdri map sorry the, the bump and let's bring down the roughness here and we could go back to our world settings and we can actually rotate the map so we'll rotate on the uh, y-axis as we rotate around we actually 
the best way to actually see that is to disconnect the factor here temporarily the uh, is camera rated a factor so now we can see the map behind and now you can see when you rotate on the z-axis you're actually rotating around the uh the hdri map right and you can actually animate the map so you could actually move the hdri map as well uh during an animation sequence so we can set it to something like here um maybe bring it up a little bit and just play around get it to wherever you like and then we can just connect our is camera ray back up to the factor go back to our layout press zero we can see the text this is our and then we can render now we can see the hdr map taking effect against the text right and here's our sphere object over here maybe we'll just press s to scale let's just scale it down and let's just press g to grab it and we'll move it if i let's put that as a little dot above it just like Let's just grab this something like that just for a bit of fun let's try and render that we've got a little little circle or sphere there and that's got the bump map applied and this one doesn't right that's how you set up hdr mapping or lighting inside um blender so it's nice and easy to do and you can get some nice effects i don't really want this object here um, you can go back to your shading and then go back to the map itself and choose a different one so I think we haven't chosen we haven't chosen the top one so let's select that one now you can see the difference right and if you're not too sure you can always remove the camera ray you can kind of see what's going on in this background and that's what's affecting the the lighting in here and remember you can just rotate them or you can set them back to their default values zero and zero and then it'll be in its default position and you can see how the line that looks, that looks quite nice as well so you can now just connect back up your is camera ray over to here press f12 and now you can see the render like this and you can always click on the text go to its material click on the base color and you can change the base color it doesn't have to be that gray color now you can go and experiment get a nice color maybe something like this press f12 and now you can see the text rendered out and you've got the bloom working there as well if the bloom is a bit too heavy bit too extreme go into here go into the bloom settings and uh, increase the increase the threshold and bring down the radius here to something like this and you can always turn on ambient inclusion and turn on screen space reflections as well and that will just help improve it as well so i'll leave you to go and experiment with um hdr lighting that's the basis of it that's the that's the node set up there that you can see right there that's what I typically do when I'm using HDR map. That is the full node setup there. So I'll leave it on the screen for a second so you can see that. And um, hopefully you'll find this tutorial useful. I really don't like that color. So I'm actually going to change it to a blue color. Let's do it to a blue color. Something like this. And that map isn't the best one. Let's see. This is the map that I tend to like to use anyway, so we'll leave it on this map here. Let's just save this. Let's press render, and we can see that depending on the lighting in your map is going to affect the bloom as well. So remember that. So if you change HDRI lighting, you might still want to go back to the bloom and drop the threshold and increase the radius to get more of a bloom effect um, on your text, right? And now that looks a little bit better. Okay, let's go ahead and save this work. Let's close this. That's how you go about setting up HDRI map lighting in Blender 3. Hopefully you find this tutorial useful. Go and experiment. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can access over 750 free video tutorials. That's the end of this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.